Hello. Let me uh, clip my microphone on. And uh, I love the debate. Maybe I'll have a live view tonight. No, I'm able to be tomorrow. It's supposed to be a storm front coming in tonight. That's why I've been busy. Pardon me. Um, field theory. Um, as I've told you before, everything has a back door. And uh, when that comes to debating people, ultimately you should always want to be a truth seeker. Debating uh, and trying to win, surely for the sake of uh, debating and trying to win, is sophistry. There's nothing I personally despise more than sophistry. That being said, uh, being in the right, it is impossible to deny the ether. Well, people will deny it, but ultimately it's impossible. Um, even in the case of uh, current quantum mechanics, which is nothing but a load of hooey and nonsense, which has no basis in reality whatsoever, which assumes that Mother Nature is an insane cross-eyed uh, crack whore um, with a calculator, uh, <laughs> it's exactly what they believe. They think that nature is an incredibly complex, um, uh, incredibly complex uh, pile of uh, unicorn farts and, uh, and uh, pixie dust. You know, everything is governed by magical particles, and we grew up believing this BS. We watch Star Trek and Star Wars, and they talk about gravitons and gluons and tachyons and all these uh, exotic uh, fairy fart particles that uh, mediate uh, charge, discharge, and uh, interactions, uh, cause and effect, or pre-causal effects. And of course, you know, there are a lot of things that they have no comprehension of. And um, they themselves, if you actually get deep into their writings, will tell you that they invent stuff to make their equations balance out. One of those things is virtual particles. There's absolutely no basis in reality for a virtual photon or virtual particle. This is how they actually explained uh, instantaneous action at a distance and the mediation of uh, field interactions. Now, uh, as is the case, there's a, a needle trick uh, that dates back to ancient India, is that uh, they'd find a hollow in a tree it's really tight and they carve it out to a certain size and they'd stick a treat in there okay and they want to capture a monkey and fry it up and eat it and they stick a treat inside that little hole and when the monkey come along he'd stick his hand in there which would fit in easily but then he'd grab the treat and uh, when he grabbed the treat uh, that would make his fist bigger and he would never let go of the treat and uh, you know as you're sitting there <laughs> See, the monkey could easily get away, but there's a perfect trap for the monkey. He'll never let, all he had to do is let go, and his hand would immediately slip out. And these quantum physicists, they always walk into my traps. And uh, they're so easy, and they're so gullible, and they're so stupid, because they're so confident. Their hubris is through the roof. Now, somebody could say the same about me, but I've got every book that's ever been written on field theory, and I'll debate every one of them any time of the day. I mean, they're, they're clueless. They're clueless. I don't want to say a word, but I'm not going to say it. They're clueless individuals. So you got the monkey sitting there, won't get his hand out of the tree, and all I have to do is just let go and it could get free. So, you know, people come along, snag the monkey, kill it, fry it up. Um, the, uh, the trap, the bear trap or the honey hole for these, uh, these relativists, these, uh, these uh, atomistic morons, which are doing nothing other than follow, following uh, Democritus and uh, his atomism, and that's what it is, it's atomism is all you have to do is bring up the word field and then the first thing we'll do is we'll start talking about uh, uh, vectors which always have uh, time variables in them and it is a rate of change over a given period of t i.e. time but what they can never do you see everything in the universe is fields and fields are not particles you cannot quantize particles. I mean, I've had some physicists, you know, come in and say, oh, I know what a field is, and they bring up uh, James Clerk Maxwell's uh, field equations. It's like, well, well, you know what? <coughs> By the way, I uh, know uh, all of James Clerk Maxwell's stuff and Oliver Heaviside and uh, the stuff that even Sir Isaac Newton talked about and uh, Faraday and uh, Tesla and Oliver Heaviside and, uh, you know, why don't we discuss uh, vectors and uh, exactly what a field is in denotation? And it's impossible. You can never speak of a field in principle. You could have, like, say, a lump of bismuth sitting in front of me. It's like, okay, this is a lump of bismuth. It's got an atomic weight of so-and-so. You know, when you do this to it, it reacts this way. It has a... Uh, 
it has a dielectric uh, permittivity of so and so, it has a magnetic permeability of so and so, that's all great. That has to do with physics, okay, dealing with the physical. Physics deals with phenomena, okay, and physics, physical, only deals with phenomena. But fields are not phenomena. And uh, when people talk about fields, what they fail to understand, especially these idiots, these a-holes in quantum mechanics and physics and relativity, is that they can never talk about a field as a thing or principle in itself, because it is impossible, because a field has no quantity. It has no physical reality in any way, shape, or form. Also, well, sure it does. It's got a vector. I've got uh, James Clerk Maxwell's uh, field equations. Yeah, those are variables of rates of change, with a given effect over a period of t, time. And uh, they'll talk about vector calculus. Yeah, we're talking about a rate of change. We're talking about effects over a given period of time. Okay? So let's talk about a field in principle, a thing in itself. Okay? Not its interactions over a given period of time. Quantify for me, i.e. quantum, quantum, quantity, physical, it's atomism. That's all it is. It's just stinking, rancid, uh, Democritan atomism. You know, atomism dates back to the ancient Greeks and earlier, and it is a branch of mental insanity because we live in a physical world. We got physical bodies, and we deal with physical shit all day long, and, you know, only thing we know is crap that we can see or examine, you know, with microscopes or, you know, Fields are not particles. Fields have no physical reality at all. A field in itself, outside of what it does over a given period of time with a certain uh, flux of exposure and a vector has, you know, like a Gaussian flux, for example. You know, we're not talking about all that. We're talking about a field in itself. What is it? And these people, they, they're like the monkey with their fist caught in a tree. Uh, they're idiots. And it's okay to be stupid. But when you think you know something, and you don't, but you tell everybody that you do, and because these people are the very fastest people to resort to, when you when you bring that, it's like quantify a field for me. You know, let's not talk about a field as it influences something over a given period of time. Let's talk about a field in and of itself. Man, they get hostile. They get angry because they know they don't have no jack shit about what a field is. And that's okay, but don't you pretend to me that you know what the hell a field is. You don't, you know. I've read all of Tesla stuff, Oliver Heaviside, James Clerk Maxwell, uh, Charles Proteus Steinmetz, Tesla, Faraday, okay? All of these are rates of change over a given period of time. We can talk about vectors all you want, but a field in and of itself as a principle, you'll never tell me anything about it because it has no physical reality. There is nothing there to touch. There is nothing there to see in a microscope. There is nothing there uh, that uh, can uh, be denotated in any physical fashion, way, shape, or form. It's like, well, sure, if I have a certain magnetic flux every given period of time, it causes an electrification of a copper coil of uh, 4 EV. No, that is influence. Okay, that is cause and effect. We're actually delineating out what something does. No, 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 no. You see, this is where these people really, I mean, they get hostile every time. They can start out really calm, but they always get hostile because they know that they've dipped their waters into uh, the black waters of, uh, you know, the, the swamp hole, you know, the quicksand, the, the, the bear trap, um, you know, the weasel cage, the, the monkey that's got his hand stuck in the tree and he's about to get his head chopped off. These people always are like that, and this is their back door, you know? You just approach it from their back door, and it's like, you want to talk about fields, bitch? Let's talk about fields, and let's see what the F you know. And you don't know shit about fields. Nothing. What is a field, ultimately? It is an ether perturbation. Okay? That's all it is. It's an ether perturbation. It's really that simple. Now, it is the case, of course, evil uh, ether. Of course, there have been countless theories of the ether. Uh, but just because there's countless theories of the ether and most of them are BS and crazy doesn't mean that, uh, that the, the ether doesn't exist. What is the ether? Ultimately, it's inertia. You cannot quantify uh, something that is an unknown that is inertia. Let's say, for example, this is a stick of dynamite. We don't know what the hell dynamite is. Um, you know, we can examine it and say it has a specific weight of this and a specific density of that, a displacement of this. Um, until we explode it, we have no idea what its potential is. 
Within that, there is inertia to be released as force in motion, okay? We explode the stick of dynamite, but we have no idea what dynamite is, okay? We're just examining something as it is, okay? And let's just say we're making a, a comparison, analogies, calling a stick of dynamite uh, inertia. Um, inertia is the dynamite, dynamite is inertia. You can't determine uh, by physically probing and examining this thing, not knowing its chemical, chemical compositions, what it is capable of. And it's the same thing with the ether. Um, you cannot quantify inertia because inertia has not yet released uh, either all or any or part of uh, its inertia as force in motion. The release of inertia is uh, always force in motion because this is the only way Mother Nature works. Mother Nature is not a cross-eyed crack or with a calculator. Uh, 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 you know, yeah. This is exactly what quantum mechanics and general relativity believe that Mother Nature, okay, let's just say Mother Nature here, is a cross-eyed crack or with a calculator. Uh, and it doesn't work that way. Okay? It does not work that way. Everything is really, really simple. Simple, simplex, excuse me. Not simple, but very simplex. Everything is governed by force and motion and inertia and acceleration. People say I use big words. Like shit, I am. I'm not using big words. I'm using simple words. I talk about centrifugal divergence and uh, centripetal convergence. I mean, these aren't big words. Maybe it's your vocabulary that's really, really small. I'm not using big words. It's that your vocabulary is really, really, really small. Either that or you went to a really crappy school, which most schools are crappy anyway, including colleges. Centrifugal divergence, centripetal convergence, everything works off force and motion, inertia and acceleration. Mother Nature is one simple broad. She's a one-trick pony that only understands one thing, inertia and the loss of inertia. And everything works off of a curved linear path, just like a dog on a chain, release the force inertia, ultimately terminates again in acceler uh, acceleration and increasing inertia. Force in motion and inertia and acceleration. Mother Nature is a simple broad. You know, she's only got one rule, the loss of inertia. And uh, the dissipation of that loss of inertia, force in motion, re-terminates back again in the rest point of inertia. Mother Nature is one simple broad, and human beings are really, really, really damn stupid. And uh, all you have to do to piss off these idiots into quantum mechanics and general relativity is just tell them, is ask them politely, it's like, tell me what a field is. I don't want to talk about a field as it changes over a given period of time with a certain vector and a, a certain effect. I want to talk about a field in and of itself, in principle, in subject. They can't do it. They can never do it. Doesn't matter how smart they are, no matter how many degrees they got. Ask a physicist, ask a general. They say, listen, bitch, tell me what a field is in principle. What is a field? Silence or anger. Those are the only two uh, possibilities. They'll either be silent. Well, actually, there's three possibilities silence or anger, or they'll blow smoke up your ass. And they'll talk about Maxwellian field. But it's like, no, no, bitch. Maxwellian field equations are uh, time-dependent effects, okay? We're talking about vectors of effects with a time variable. I asked you what the hell a field was in principle, and you don't know. Just say you don't know, because that would make me appreciate you a lot more. It means that you're smarter than I thought you were. It's like, just say, I don't know. It's like, good. Okay? Because here's the truth of the matter. When someone thinks they know something, then they don't go looking for the answers. If someone knows they don't know something, they either don't go looking for it because they're just too lazy or don't give a shit, or they go looking for the answers. But when you've got a bunch of stupid people that don't know the answer, but think that they know the answer and tell everybody else that they know the answer, then that's where no progress occurs and there is no wisdom and no intelligence to be found. It is a wasteland of stupidity and typical human ignorance. Undeniable, irrefutable. Get it, got it. Good. Stack that in your pipe and smoke it.